the great things that I get to do as a host here on Trek Culture is I get to go super, super into detail about all of these ships that in my head I'm just flying around. That's why lists like this, written by our own Clive Burrell, is so much fun. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are 10 secrets of the USS Enterprise F you need to know. Number 10, Verity on High. The arrival of the Enterprise F in Star Trek Picard wasn't actually the first time in canon that we saw an Odyssey-class vessel. IDW's graphic novel prequel series to Picard featured the USS Verity, NCC 97007. This was assigned to Admiral Picard to assist in the Romulan evacuation program, the precursor to the supernova that would kickstart not only the Kelvin universe, but also a lot of the action in Picard and beyond. As noted in an article for IDW itself, Star Trek Online's Thomas Moroni, the person who adapted the design to fit Star Trek Online, stated that in this period of history, there were two Odyssey class ships uh, created. One was the USS Verity, the other was the USS Odyssey. They were created as a direct response to the Riemann Scimitar. It, you, know, you all remember how big that was. And this was Starfleet's version of a heavy cruiser. The further we look into this, the backstory states that actually the Odyssey class was put on hold so that all of the resources for designing and building this fleet of ships could be put into the Verity to rush that into service for the Romulan evacuation. However, with the subsequent failure of the Romulan evacuation and the destruction of Utopia Planitia shipyards, the Odyssey itself was somewhat forgotten and the Verity was mothballed. We have a couple then of different backstories to the Odyssey class, depending on whether you follow Star Trek Online or whether you follow IDW's story. But it does remain that the Enterprise F is the only Odyssey class ship that has received any significant screen time in the episodes of Picard. Number nine, thanks for the support. Taking inspiration from the Enterprise F's online heritage, the one that we saw in the show did in fact feature a small docked support craft at the aft. In the spot that historically would see the shuttle bay on such ships like the Constitution class, we get the Aquarius class support ship. This is analogous to the Aero Shuttle on Voyager and the Calypso Captain's Yacht of the Enterprise D. And like those, we never really got to see it do anything in the few minutes of screen time that the Enterprise F got. In Star Trek Online, the ship was actually destroyed in 2410 by Captain Sean, but naturally it was redesigned rebuilt and redocked. The ship wasn't just a support craft in terms of getting people off the ship if needs be. It was different from a runabout in that way. It could actually enter a battle on the support side of the Enterprise F as well. Both the Aquarius and the Odyssey class actually got their names from the Apollo 13 space mission. They were named after the lander and the command module. Of course, that would go on to make sure that we would all remember the phrase, Houston, we've had a problem. Number eight, now for the stats. The best resource for information on the Enterprise F is Star Trek Online and the official breakdown that's given for the ship there. Built at the Utopia Planitia shipyard, the Enterprise F was armed with 18 Mark 12 phaser arrays, four variable payload warhead launchers, two phaser turrets, and two heavy phaser cannon mounts. A bit of beefed up firepower for the Enterprise F then. One thing that the design carried over from both the Galaxy and Sovereign class ships was that it had the ability to separate its saucer section. This was a little bit different, where the Enterprise D's saucer section was used effectively as a life raft to help people escape a battle scenario. The saucer section of the Enterprise F was designed to become a separate, fully operational battleship if the situation required it. It was, in a way, then closer in design to the experimental Prometheus class. There was, of course, an array of shuttles. There was also an Argo, which you will remember from Star Trek Nemesis. And there was several Yellowstone class runabouts. Now, the Yellowstone was slightly different from the Danube class and was only seen once before in Star Trek Voyager's non secretaire There is also a captain's yacht and, of course, the previously mentioned Aquarius. Number seven. Feeling shunned? 
It only took 33 years, if you don't include the silent appearance in Star Trek Lower Decks, but Elizabeth Shelby returned to Star Trek. She had gone from the promotion-hungry Borg expert from Best of Both Worlds to become a full admiral who was ceremonially, at least, in charge of the Enterprise F during the Frontier Day celebrations. The Picard logs that were released online suggested that the ship has had a variety of captains over its lifespan, but in Star Trek Online, the Enterprise F is commanded by the Andorian Captain Vakel Shon. This makes him the third non-human commander of an Enterprise, after Spock in the Wrath of Khan and Worf, if that little wink and nod is what we think it is, in the episode Vox. There are, of course, other variations. In Peter David's novel Imzadi from 1992, it suggests the Enterprise F is in service around 2408 and is commanded by none other than Data. The later DS9 series Millennium would also suggest that there was an Enterprise F, but this ship was a Defiant class that was built after the destruction of the Enterprise E. It was initially commanded by Jean-Luc Picard, later commanded by William Riker until it too bit the bullet. Number six, Competitive Edge. The Enterprise F design actually came about from a competition run by Star Trek Online to celebrate its first anniversary aptly named Design the Next Enterprise. This wasn't the first time that a competition like this had been run. It's the Pocket Books had actually run a similar competition with the Luna class USS Titan coming from that, designed by artist Sean Tarango. The success of the Luna class competition contributed to convincing CBS that this Design the New Enterprise idea was a good one, and so they ran with it, and they got thousands of entries which were then narrowed down to about 25 before eventually being narrowed down to a final four. The criteria for the design was relatively straightforward. Effectively, when you looked at it, you had to think iconic Federation starship. So two nacelles, deflector dish, primary hull, saucer section. With all of these aspects being included in his design, Adam Eel actually won the overall competition. Some of the other Close to the close to the first place entries included Jason Vector Lee's four nacelled ship that would actually be repurposed and reused as the USS Chimera in Star Trek Online, commanded by Captain Nog. Number five, screen time. The Enterprise F just misses out on the honor of having the shortest amount of screen time of any of the Enterprises. That honor goes to the Enterprise J, which we only really saw a design graphic of and a bit of the corridor that Daniels and Archer were standing in in Enterprise's third season. The Enterprise F appears in the last two episodes of season three of Picard, Vox and The Last Generation. Now, it was shown quite heavily in the trailers and the marketing campaign, but it was also very, it was very quickly stated that it wasn't going to be the hero ship of the season, so as to kind of tease audiences, but also not set them up for, well, not seeing very much of it. The F was seen earlier in the season as a graphic on the file that Ro Laren gives to Picard, but apart from, apart from these few fleeting glimpses, we don't really get to see very much of it. Also, the return of the Enterprise D in the very last scene of Vox and of course The Last Generation does somewhat eclipse the Enterprise F just, just a bit. And considering that the Enterprise F was to be decommissioned after Frontier Day, it's unlikely that we're going to see her again for a while. Number four, size of it now. The Enterprise F reflected the way Enterprises had been going. You know, when you think the Enterprise B was bigger than the Enterprise A, C to the B, D, and then E is longer than D, but D is technically a bigger ship. But yes, it reflected the time of Starfleet's need for these larger vessels, be they for exploration or with the advanced dangers of the Dominion and the Borg, and I suppose the Romulans, the Starfleet needed more battleships. The Enterprise G, on the other hand, reflected this new, more peaceful era of Starfleet's history. So it was deemed to shrink the size of the flagship 
and it would then become the, this neo-constitution class, which we had of course seen in the season as the Titan A. Things must have got a little hairy again as the years went on because the Enterprise J is roughly the size of Earth's moon. All right, that's a bit of an overstatement, but it is considerably larger. The Enterprise F is 1,061 meters long, as opposed to the Enterprise E, which was 685 meters. The Enterprise D was only 641 meters long, but as I stated, it was rather larger in other respects. This makes the Odyssey class the largest class of ship that had been seen in the Prime timeline up to that point. It does have fewer decks than the Enterprise D, 32 as opposed to 48. This, however, is in part due to its lengthier, more streamlined shape. This makes the Enterprise F around two and a half times the size of the original Constitution class, which itself only had 23 decks to fit 430 crew. As they state in Trials and Tribulations, they really did pack them in on these old ships, just for fun. If we hop over into the Kelvin timeline, the USS Vengeance would still dwarf the Enterprise F. It is 1450 meters long. That's a big ship. Number three, crafty construction. One of the defining features of the Enterprise F is the double neck that it boasts as opposed to the singular neck of almost all previous ships. According to the bonus issue of the Enterprise F from Eagle Moss's Star Trek Starships collection, Adam Eel's design was favored because it was big and majestic. There were design cues from the Galaxy and Sovereign classes that made it feel familiar, and the double neck was the icing on the cake. Eel himself had revisited the work of original Enterprise designer Matt Jeffries, as well as the futuristic ideas of Doug Drexler for the Enterprise J, and of course, Andrew Probert's design of the Enterprise D. He kept the overall shape quite similar to what had gone before. The primary hull was raised and separate from the secondary hull via this double neck. The nacelles were attached with backward facing pylons. Quite simply put, it looked like an Enterprise. Cryptic's Thomas Moroni then made a couple of slight alterations when designing the ship for Star Trek Online. He widened the neck, for example, and he swept back the saucer a little bit over the engineering hull. To date, this is the only ship in canon that has this kind of distinct design. Number two, short shelf life. According to Star Trek Picard, the NCC 1701F was only in service for about 15 years. It was being decommissioned in 2401's Frontier Day following a disastrous Monfet gambit that saw a catastrophic systems failure shipwide. It was deemed easier just to decommission the ship than to repair it. Now, if that sounds like a bit of a short life for a ship, consider that the Enterprises A, B, C, D and E all came in under that 15 year lifeline. In fact, D had the shortest lifespan at only seven years, whereas the original Enterprise, if we include the refit as well, was going around for about 40 years. That record is not likely to be broken anytime soon. The Picard logs that preceded Star Trek Picard revealed that the ship had been commissioned in 2386. Executive producer and showrunner Terry Metalis stated that Admiral Shelby's posting of the Enterprise F was purely for the ceremonies of Frontier Day only. There was a series of unnamed in the show captains who had command during the Enterprise's lifespan. In Star Trek Online, however, the Enterprise F was only commissioned in 2409 which meant that the Enterprise E probably had a longer lifespan, although its final fate may still have not been Worf's fault. Number one, no to the upgrade. The Enterprise's F's appearance in Star Trek Picard cements itself in prime canon that you know, we have seen it, it has been out there and it got, well, seven layers of hell kicked out of it by uh, the Borg. But we won't think about that for the moment. What it does is that with the decommissioning of the Enterprise F on screen, it means that what happened in Star Trek Online is very unlikely to happen. Well, it can't because the Enterprise G's already been commissioned. In Star Trek Online, the Enterprise F received a major overhaul and refit following the closing of the Iconian War. 
These refits included more prominent uh, impulse engines, changes to the nacelles and the pylons, and a change of the overall paint scheme, and that's just on the outside. These were seen for the first time in the episode Cilia and Charybdis. Now, Eagle Moss's Star Trek Starships collection did in fact release a model of this refit Yorktown class. Eagle Moss released two variants of the original Enterprise F, one in the largely black and white livery that's seen in Star Trek Online, and one in a more traditional Starfleet grey. The producers of Star Trek Picard decided to go with the online version, which means, funnily enough, that grey model of the Enterprise F can really only be found as an option within Star Trek Online. And there you have it. There is the secrets of the Enterprise F that you need to know. What did you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much again to Clive Burrell for penning this list. And thank you so much to Martin for making this video look pretty. You're all awesome and wonderful folks. Please remember to follow us over on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Blue Sky as well. We are at Trek Culture, we're at Trek Culture YT, excuse me, on Instagram. Otherwise, we're just at Trek Culture on Twitter, at Trek Culture on Blue Sky. And depending on when this video releases, we may or may not have a TikTok channel. Who knows? I have been Sean. You can follow me at Sean Ferrick on the various socials. You are wonderful. You are awesome. Look after yourself until I'm talking to you again. Make sure that you live long and prosper. And in this crazy, crazy world that we're living in, remember, there are good people left. You might be one of them. Thanks very much. Heavy phaser cannon mounts.